special of the, of the Rasta Reggae Hour, much like the Bob Marley Spotlight at 35 after the hour. Of course, that's 10 minutes. All Ohio University students, Electric Mud have been performing in Athens for six months. A combination of blues, jazz, and funk, the band's music is a refreshing change of pace. We'll begin by giving you a taste of their music. On drums is Darren Dorton, John Seidleitz on the bass. At the keyboards is Mr. Dave Opke, Jeff Spurlock's on sax, Bob Haven's doing the vocals, and sharing the guitar duties are Shane Kite and Ross Van Pelt. Ladies and gentlemen, Electric Mud.
the Katie and Country Boy, two soon-to-be classic tracks from Electric Mud. We'll be back to chat with the band right after this. William's still here with you. I'd like to remind you for progressive music at its best. Welcome back to Hometown Heroes featuring Electric Mud. Why don't we begin by talking about how the band formed? Anybody want to uh, take the opportunity to fill us in on that? It started, it first started as Dumpster. <laughs> was the name of the band. Yeah. It was me, Bob, and, and John. He was playing bass, Bob was playing guitar and singing. And uh, that really didn't go anywhere. Shane, Shane came down and played a little bit with us a few times, and that didn't go anywhere. And uh, well, I guess so. Uh, winter quarter, we all decided to uh, we decided to try it again, except with uh, bringing Ross. Fall quarter. Last fall. Was it fall quarter? Yeah. Yeah. It was fall. Well, I, that's basically how it happened. So, yeah, so it started out as a three-piece, then a four-piece, then a five-piece, <laughs> with, me, with, with me not playing guitar anymore and just singing. Just singing. Right, and then we had a guy named Billy Ray Chinock. He played harmonica. What happened to him? He moved out to uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And he's going to be coming back, hopefully, sometime before April. Have any plans to uh, re-include him? Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, now, I understand Jeff didn't join you until just recently. Yeah, yeah actually, we, Dave, Dave, Dave was next. Yeah, Dave was Dave next Dave joined the us line. at the beginning of... Uh, After Billy Ray left, he came in and took his... Beginning of winter quarter? Yeah, yeah beginning, beginning of winter quarter. quarter. And then... Uh, you can tell he's excited. Well, <laughs> 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 well once, uh, once all of you were uh, a unit as you are tonight. What was your first session together like? Did you instantly know that there was chemistry? Uh, was it kind of experimentation, feeling one another out? It was pretty rough. It was pretty rough. Oh, so definitely, it's always really rough yeah. when you first get going. I mean, um, but I, yeah, but after, after a, a couple of songs we wrote started playing, yeah. I could tell it was going to be killer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, what goals do you have as a band? Where do you expect to uh, to take yourself? Uh, see, that brings up a very uh, <laughs> controversial uh, question. But uh, actually, uh, just Let's have a good time. Well, we're going to all school. be around to, through next year. Mm -hmm. So, well, hopefully, we can stay together. And you're a pretty young bunch. The oldest of you is 22. No, not actually, the oldest is 21. 21. I, 21. I thought yeah. he was that old. You're the oldest. <laughs> Bob's oldest. Wow. wow. Yeah. He's the daddy of the group. And, and Dave's the Dave is only 19. Baby. He's only a freshman. Well, uh, do each of you plan to pursue a musical career? Why don't we just take turns? Yeah, right. and well, I definitely am, but not, not, not necessarily this form. Because, uh, you know, I study a, a different kind of music than this kind of music here at OU. But, um, which is? Which is? Well, basically what I want to do is sing opera. Which a lot of people mm -hmm. want to tell them that. Give them a little flesh. Yeah, yeah. Give, give them give a little, little touch. Come on. No, come on. You have to, Bob. Come on. Just a little bit. Come on. Not without any accompaniment or anything. Yeah. 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 Well, we'll work on them later. How about you, Ross? Uh, uh, well, I'm a photography major, so pretty much uh, tied down to that basic thing. I mean, I wouldn't mind it at all. You know, if you're in the right place at the right time, you get discovered, something like that. I'm going to school for something totally different. Darren? Uh, well, I was a music major for two court, two years, and then I switched to audio production, thinking that would give me an easier way to get my foot in the door, as opposed to uh, pursuing a music career. So that's what I want to do. I'd like to move to Memphis after I graduate. Um, and, uh, what, what form of music are you interested in pursuing, ultimately? You're listening to it. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. 
John. John? You know, John's going to go climb some mountains or something. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to concentrate on uh, all my majors, environmental geography, but I'm um, basically just a recreationalist at heart. Uh, man of leisure, <laughs> and uh, I'm going to pursue leisure as long as I can. <laughs> That's about it. Huh. So I can do that too, John. I am pretty good at it, huh? So, so at this point, it's uh, more of a hobby than a career aspiration? Uh, everything's a hobby for me. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Jeff? Well, I'm a music major right now. I want to do what I'm playing in school, but this is what I like to do. Yeah, hopefully someday, I don't know, I'll just... If I don't get into music, you know, do something really good job. If I'm, you know, I just always gonna play inside, make a few bucks, have fun with it. Shane? Oh, uh, uh, it's a dream of mine, but you know, it's so hard to make it like in the quote unquote music business. So, I don't know. I'm a poly sci major. I li I'm gonna play guitar all my life, but you know, if it happens, it happens. Dave? Well, I. Uh, plan on going into audio engineering, trying to find a job that would keep me with music without trying without having to be a music major because I couldn't I, was, I thought about music major and I couldn't think of anything to do with it Smart after I graduated. Yeah. So See, he's audio following. engineering is following my the next choice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, who writes the majority of your material? Everybody. Everybody. It's, it's a group. It's weird if we write songs. Sometimes one of us will write a whole song separate from everyone else and bring it in, mm -hmm. and then we'll all learn it. Or sometimes so one of us will write part of a song and bring it in, and then everybody will throw in their... Yeah. Everyone always throws in their two cents. Yeah, see, we've done, yeah. like, first the first batch of tunes, we wrote pretty much all acoustically. Like, we all sat around with acoustic guitars and just got them all down that way and then went to rehearsal and played them electric. I think yeah. it works best. But and, but, <laughs> and, and then, like now, what we've been doing, and it's working, like we got together a couple tunes yeah. yesterday, but, you know, sometimes what we'll do is we'll just go, you know, just we'll mulling it over, you know, we'll mull it over in rehearsal. And just, After a lot of fighting in the yeah. background. Oh, boy. Yeah. So a there, lot of there, there are <laughs> creative and personality conflicts? Well, that's yeah, sure. I mean, that's, 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 to be, that's to be expected. Yeah. Yeah. How do you well, work? I see it because, like, well, Ross and Shane and I are all from Cincinnati. We've known each other since fourth or fifth grade or whatever. So you played together in high school? Off and on, yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, we've known each other for so long, and, you know, when you know somebody for so long, I mean, you know what gets their gut, and they know what gets yours, and, you know, it's just like, you know, you know, dealing with your brother or something. You get pissed plus, at him, but... Yeah. Plus, you bring in a tune, it's like your baby. You know? Exactly, yeah. And you got, you got this little ego about it, so... And somebody wants to try and change it around, you're like, ah. Right. But yeah, everyone... <laughs> it, it makes it better if... If it does, it's yeah, fun. everyone's got equal input. I mean, no song is uh, is one man's really, because uh, everyone adds to it. Like I, I wrote a song just of uh, the music, and I'm not much of a lyric writer, so Shane went ahead and put the lyrics down to it. This next tune is called "You Rock My World." It's kind of a slinky, skanky kind of nasty thing.
Rock My World and Cajun Stomp, two originals from Electric Mud. More conversations on the way as Hometown Heroes continues. Smoke Mitten back with Electric Mud. I just want to read you a description of how each of the members of this band described their music. Uh, Darren called it blues-oriented, our version of rock and roll as we see it. Bob said uh, blues, funk, and rock and roll. Ross said bluesy with a punch. It was uh, muddy blues-oriented, uh, and that came from Shane. Dave called it blues, a little bit of jazz, and sometimes progressive. John called it modern post-war Chicago blues. <laughs> <laughs> and our saxophonist Jeff said it's uh, real, real music, blues, no finger-tapping BS. Um, <laughs> what do you guys consider to be your musical influences? Who wants to answer? Jazz. Um, yeah, let's, uh, well, I'll, well, I would say, for me, uh, being a drummer, uh, <coughs> Mitch Mitchell played with the Hendrix Experience, and uh, Butch Trucks and uh, Jamo Johnson with the Almond Brothers. Those, that's, uh, you know, and then, you know, there's all kinds of other people, but those are two of mine, mm -hmm. mainly. Anybody else? Um, I'd have to say, coming from, I basically came from a jazz background, playing jazz all throughout high school, and then, you know, one name would be Jaco Pastorius, right off the bat, but also another major influence would be uh, Jack Bruce from mm -hmm. Green. Mm -hmm. It's probably, probably more noticeable than anybody else in my opinion, I'd say. Jeff? Uh, you guys probably don't know this guy, King Curtis. He, yeah. uh, he uh, led the horn section for like Reed Franklin, a bunch of Motown songs, just real soulful and like, stuff. <coughs> Shane, what about you? Uh, let's see. Um, just blues guys, you know, Stevie Ray Vaughan, uh, Clapton, majorly Clapton, mainly. And uh, Howard Collins. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know what Bob's going to say, Luciano and Paparazzi. <laughs> That's true, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> what I was going to say is that uh, I'm, I'm influenced by everything I listen to. When I listen to a lot of different kinds of music, I listen to classic music, I listen to opera. And obviously, for, you know, for seeing this kind of music, I'm influenced by, you know, by you know, people like Taj Mahal. And I, I listen to Billy Holiday a lot, and that's, you know, more jazzy, but it's, it's, uh... You know. I think he sounds like the guy from the cult a little. Bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You can when sing he gets, exactly, You can sing exactly like, like Jack, Jack Bruce. Bruce. Yeah, he's got to <laughs> do that. <laughs> Well, you know, we're not going to let you escape this program without giving uh, us a little <laughs> bit of opera before we're out. I don't think so. Out. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Is. Dave, how about you? Well, I'd have to say, although it's kind of hard to implement into some of the music, uh, Mac Rebinac, or I guess better be known as Dr. John, uh, but not so much his early stuff that was popular. He had solo piano stuff that I like to listen to and try and uh, emulate. But... Oh, uh, although I don't know, I just started trying to listen to keyboard players, so I don't really have a list that I could come up with. That was the only one. Anything from that, I like the New Orleans style piano and stuff like that. Well, I got to ask you, why they call you Dr. Johnny Fever? No, that's, that's John. John. That's John. <laughs> that's John. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, answer the question. Uh, let's start out from uh, this kid that lived in my uh, hall freshman year. <laughs> Tony, what's his last name, Bob? Um. Oh my God. Um, I well, can't anyways, this right. crazy kid that that liked to like do a lot of substances. And <laughs> <laughs> Something your band, I'm sure, does not promote oh, or encourage. Heavens, <laughs> heavens, no. And uh, he was always quite quite wired and quite exciting. And um, he just came up with like nicknames for everybody on the floor. I think with with no with no real meaning seemingly <laughs> behind them. No. He does kind of look like Howard Hassman a little but bit. John, just, John is just the doctor. He's the thief. That's all That's yeah. all there is. Everybody in town knows him as that, too. The thief. And Ross is the hoss. Yep. He yeah. doesn't like to be called that, but yeah. why not? Because it uh, reminds me of some country bumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> See, hoss just rhymes with Ross, and it's just stuck. He hates it, but we call him it anyway. Well, besides uh, Schroeder from the Peanuts, what are, what are your musical influences? <laughs> Uh, definitely Schroeder. Yeah. Donny Osmond. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, pre I'm pretty much, uh, as long as it's good quality, tastefully done guitar work, I like it. No matter what style it is. Uh, but I Steely have to Dan. say, yeah, yeah, definitely. Steely Dan is definitely my favorite all around, but that encompasses so many musicians individually. 
How did, uh, so, how did you guys begin playing your respective instruments? Was this something that happened in, uh, in childhood? Your parents encouraged you? Or, uh, I started when I was uh, in fourth grade. I was like nine or ten. Darren just likes beating on things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, <laughs> I watch it there, Alice. No, I've been, I, I've, you know, I take less. I've been taking lessons for a while and stuff. And it's just something I've always loved. I played sax for a little while, but I got pulled into that. Yeah, I played. For, yeah, in fifth grade, I was in band, and I was terrible, man. I was, <laughs> I was squeaking left and right, you know, and I couldn't play. And I had a snare drum at home, and I don't know. That's what I do. Well, John, when did you start playing? Uh, I started playing piano when I was five. Uh, that was very, you know, relaxed, you know, relaxed atmosphere, nothing really hard. It, it wasn't the piano lessons from hell? <laughs> no, not really. Uh, then I switched over to trombone when I was in fifth grade. <laughs> I went to that, that too. I loved it. I mean, I loved big band era kind of things, swing. Uh, Tommy Dorsey <laughs> is my kind of guy. And uh, so I really, like, got into Tommy Dorsey and, and Frank Sinatra at a young age. And then one thing led to another. I uh, <laughs> gave up the trombone, picked up the bass in high school, and uh, the rest is history. I don't know if the rest is history, <laughs> but it's, there's a lot of interesting paths that the bass is taking. And how about you, Jeff? Oh, uh, I started in fourth grade, and uh, the reason I played is uh, I went to the state fair when I like the summer before fourth grade, and I saw Casey and the Sunshine Band, a great band. <laughs> And they had these three guys playing saxophone. I thought it was pretty neat. I've also played bass for a little while. Mm -hmm. Tried that in high school. Played a little bit in the band. It didn't work out. <laughs> so I stuck to sax. Shane? Um, well, I guess I'm a late bloomer as guitarist go. I started, I don't know, freshman or maybe sophomore year. In high school? In high school, man. Yeah, not just a year ago. And. I had this little cheap Yakima acoustic. I remember that. So I, I, I made noise on that for about half a year and finally got a guitar. Got the tell it. How often do you, you practice every day? Too much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll attest to that because I lived with them for two years and all I listened to, and yet, and that's one thing, you know, I, you know, I, I had to play in a band with them because I listened to them practice for two years and I had to reap the benefits of that in <laughs> <laughs> some way. He's getting me back. Yeah. Well when did when did you become an opera star Bob? Uh, well I just started I started singing when I was in junior high because there was just one lady that really encouraged me. Uh, her name was Mrs. Bottlewell and she needed some some guys to sing her in her chorus. And um you know so I, so I said all right and um and she always just started kept encouraging me from from then and uh she was also my high school um director and um I just started studying privately with her also, and I did musicals and stuff. And then, uh, you know, if you had asked me a few years ago, um, or maybe three years ago, that told me that I was really going to want to have, a, you know, had a, would have a strong desire to sing opera, I probably would have laughed at you. <laughs> but uh, now, I mean, there's no question that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. What you did? Well, I pretty much been playing piano all my life. I took lessons uh, until, oh, I don't know. I think like eighth grade or something like that and it, I didn't really start playing like this kind of stuff until a couple years later when I got into I was like doing Godspell I think with my school and we needed to jam in like the intermission or something like that and I, I learned I figured out that I had to start doing that kind of stuff and I liked it and I developed that a lot more so I, that's when I started playing this stuff and I just consider all the lessons just they help a lot for technique but uh, and like I said, I didn't start playing this stuff until like about five or six years ago. Ross? Uh, I started taking lessons in, when I was like a freshman in high school from some really brilliant teacher yeah. uh, named Roger Klug. If you're out there, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, same with me. That's my yeah, Shane had the same teacher too. But uh, he was, great guy. as far as lessons, those were definitely vital. I mean, I learned a lot over those years and quit taking lessons and when I was a senior in high school and then you know, I was just pretty much yeah, on my own. Yeah. Practice, practice. Uh, are any uh, of you in any other Athens bands or have been in any other Athens bands? I was in the Guana Nasties. Yeah. How was that? That was good, but uh, I must say this is, uh, I mean it was good. It, I joined it when I was a freshman. It was kind of weird because I just got up here and then next thing you know I'm playing in the bars. Huh. 
and it's kind of strange, but uh, I like this band much, much more because I've got much more of a creative input to it, and it's playing the kind of music that I like to do. When I was in that, I was playing, you know, more, more of their stuff. Do uh, do any of you get nervous in front of a crowd? Definitely. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah. Everyone that says they don't is probably lying. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh yeah, definitely. But once once you get through the first tune, it's automatic pilot for me anyway. I mean. How would uh, how would you rate the Athens music scene? Getting uh, better. Yeah, it's, it's getting really good, better. man. Uh, Snap. Well, there's the Snapdragons. Mm -hmm. Sweet bank. I like the, those guys. Mm -hmm. Spanky. Yeah. yeah. Spanky's really good too. Judy Birds. Judy Birds. Birds. Yeah. The Crunch. Uh, who else would I guess see? Uh, and there's Mercy. always yeah, 18th Mercy, and then there's always open stage at the dugout, which is really, mm -hmm. which is really a lot of fun because you go up there and you can see you know members from all different bands, and that's a chance when everybody gets to go up and play together and make fools of themselves. So, what's your favorite place to perform in Athens? Definitely not the, the Union. Next, the, <laughs> the <next laughs> pretty much. Yeah, well, why's the Union on? Uh, they don't like us there too much. No. We'll just leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> But we'll be happy. To yeah, we're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> we are gonna be <laughs> playing there. Change our PR, man. Uh, <laughs> we are gonna be playing there second Thursday in April, which I believe is the 11th. We're mm -hmm. gonna play. Supposedly, it's not all hooked up yet. Uh, well, we'll talk to you that day, but we're yeah. supposed to close for Dan Reed. He's gonna play an hour or two, and then we're gonna finish for him. But the Nick's a nice place to play. Dugout. The that's dugout's that. a nice place. I used to play there when it was McStinkies. <laughs> uh, but yeah, as far the next coolest place we played, we split a gig with 18th Emergency there. Mm -hmm. And uh, although the crowd was kind of bogus, sound was great though. Great sound, <laughs> free beer. In and out of tape. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say that in here. Yeah, free beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, how about doing a couple more tunes for us? Okay, I think uh, we'll do uh, Welcome Boogie, which is an instrumental, and then after that we'll close. Uh, close it with the uh, backseat lover. It's an American tradition. Sounds good. Here's right. more electric mud.
Electric Mug with Backseat Lover and Welcome Boogie. We'll be back to have a final word with the band in a minute. Back to ACRN for more of Hometown Heroes. Well, it, uh, I just want to comment at this point that even though you guys have only been playing together for about six months, that uh, your musicianship uh, is really quality material. Are you uh, just saying that? No, I really <laughs> want to compliment you on that. Okay, thanks. Uh, the transitions in your music are complicated, but flow smoothly, and uh, you guys are doing a heck of a job. Thanks. Um, at this point, I'd like to uh, do another like uh, go around the circle type okay. deal, and uh, maybe ask you to rate yourselves as musicians. Oh my. To my ears, you sound great, but uh, perhaps you have a more more critical view of yourselves, as is often the case. Um, I'll sound modest. Uh, <laughs> I think it's a good thing to be to, for. Uh, I always try and be my own worst critic, and I think I think I know Shane does that especially a lot. Shane's very hard on himself. Yeah, he'll tell you he played a C sharp and back seat. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, no, wasn't. That was a double secret harmonic minor. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, that's, I, that's something that I try and do, and I, I think it, it helps out if, um, if we, and I think, I think we all do that a lot. Yeah. yeah. I, I think uh, myself, I, I wouldn't want to rate myself on a 1 to 10 scale or anything. Mm -hmm. I think I've improved a lot since I've come to OU, studying with Guy Romanco, who's the uh, best teacher I've ever studied with. One thing he showed me that you just got to stay loose, and uh, if I can stay loose, then I'm all right. But, if I tighten up or, and get tense, then uh, then it's down from there. But um, are you all satisfied with the uh, oh, the quality of your music oh, as a I'm, band? I'm thrilled. Yeah. I'm absolutely. Is thrilled. it where you want to be at this point in time? Oh, I, it's more than I expected. It can always be better, though. Yeah. It's so really a lot more than I expected. Um, well, let's talk a little bit about the music itself, uh, particularly the lyrics. Um, <laughs> is there a statement that? that the seven of you are trying to make, or a philosophy you're trying to get across to your listeners through the music? Talk to Kite about that. Mm. Well, some songs you just throw together. Yeah. 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 Some yeah. songs are just silly, yeah. silly fun stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cajun stops kind of got, I, I don't know, he wrote the words, but I just can't. Do you ever get political? Uh, not yet, no. Not yet. <laughs> but I don't know. It's like, it's weird, when you write something, however it comes out is how it comes out, it's hard to, like, it's really hard to write, say, for instance, a traditional blues tune. And that's what I try to do with Cajun Stomp, and it, that's what I try to do with that. But it's hard to do. Yeah. A lot of the lyrics, I think, uh, I don't want to say they take up space in the song. You end up scrapping them. But, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, a lot of them are lighthearted. We haven't really gotten into serious issues yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think uh, I think there is a little bit in Cajun Stomp, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to... I think we're more of musicians than uh, political activists. Mm -hmm. Except, except for Shane. Yeah, except for Shane. They have the lyrics, I don't know, I think they're just... Uh, some of them, some of them, a lot of them, I think, have more personal meaning. Uh, how often do you guys perform in public these days? Um, well, we've played about... Last quarter, we played about four or five times, I guess, and we're going to be, hopefully... Again, playing in April, second Thursday with Dan Reed at the Union, and uh, we're going to be in Cincinnati in the end of April for a party back home. So hopefully, we've got to, you know, if people hear this, and uh, we've got a tape too that that uh, we do up here in the Tcom studio as well. We're going to get that out to some bars and hopefully get our own gigs. We are available. Yep. <laughs> we won't do any religious functions. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you have an upcoming good gig, just let us know, and uh, we'll yeah, send it over. Push. You know, we'll, we'll send it over ACRN's way, as I'll put it on the rock report. Right. Um, right. One I thing, one play. thing I want to ask you, since you're all students, uh, obviously you have to spend a significant amount of time uh, in order to, to keep your your skills up. Mm -hmm. Does it inter interfere with your studies? It, it certainly must to some degree. Mm -hmm. it, it, more more than that, yeah. I, I find time to do that, but it interferes with stuff like eating. No, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's serious, man, because yeah. hey, we'll come I'll come home and <laughs> practice it. I'll be ravished. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I'll just go to town. <laughs> like six egg omelets. I'll be in town. Okay, well, before we wrap this up, i got to ask Bob again if he will. Uh -uh. No, 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 Come on, just a little one. It's in the right come setting. It's in the right setting. Just a little one. Come on. I'm here singing different, different music. I'm not just promoting my, the other music. Just a little bit. How about what? some lounge Bob? <laughs> <laughs> Don't fly with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Okay, well, he won't do it. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll bring you back another time and uh, see if we can right. can do that. Thanks for uh, having us. I really want to thank you for being here. I hope that. I hope that all of your musical aspirations come true in the very near future, and the best of luck to y'all. All right. And uh, we'll be back to wrap up this edition of Hometown Heroes in a minute. The 99 point. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Hometown Heroes. Hometown Heroes was produced by Matt Rohal and Jacques Sabri, engineered by Jacques Sabri, production assistance provided by Steve Meyer and Darla Botzer. Hometown Heroes was edited by Steve Meyer and Doug Wolfinger. Special thanks to all the guys in Electric Mud. Don't miss next week when we'll spend an hour with beer. For everyone here at ACRN and Hometown Heroes, I'm Smoke Minton.